Hi everyone, Blake here with another video and today I want to cover a topic which I think gets a lot of people confused. I think people wanting to get into planter tanks too often just go and pick plants at random and throw them in a tank and hope they're going to do okay. They see all these chemicals on the shelves of their local fish store and get confused and intimidated. So I'm hoping that today at the end of this video we can simplify the process and give a lot more confidence with being able to troubleshoot planter tank issues and put you on the path to success. So let's jump straight into the video. Before I jump into what all of these products actually do, I will just let you know about something that's pretty exciting, I think. The cool thing about this line that I'm gonna show you today, which is the line from River Revolution, is that about half of the products contain photos from my fish room. Take for example this biophosphorus here. You might recall this Pogus demonstellatus from my three foot Bashir tank. So about six or seven of these products here that I'll show you today do contain my photos and it's a pretty cool way to get a little piece of my fish room into your fish room if you feel so inclined. If you did want to pick up any of these River Revolution products, well the channel sponsor AquariumUniverse.com.au does stock a lot of it and you can get 10% off using the code Blake's Aquatics. I was pro provided these products free of charge, but no money has changed hands or there's no uh, commitment to say anything good about them. Also, the information that I will provide does translate to other products with these similar ingredients. So you can make your own determination which ones you'll go with, but I do like River Revolution as a nice Australian made alternative. So the very first thing I want to talk about is probably the thing that you're most familiar with and that is this huge bucket of activated carbon here. Now you've probably seen activated carbon when you've purchased a new filter. You usually get a little cartridge or a bag full of this stuff in there. And the reason that I want to start off with activated carbon is first of all, it has a really great use to uh, remove smells and discoloration in your water. However, if you do fertilize, it can also soak up a lot of the fertilizing. So if you're trying to target a specific thing, you might find that your activated carbon is actually removing that from your water before your plants can. The other thing to note about activated carbon is that it only lasts about up to four weeks before it has uh, absorbed as many nutrients as it can and it's exhausted from that point. So if you are happy with the clarity, coloration and the smell of your water and you're looking to get a really nice uh, flourishing planted tank, then perhaps it might be a good idea to actually remove this stuff. So the first thing to be aware of is that uh, a successful planted tank is a healthy balance between light, CO2 and nutrients. So it's not really helpful to just take all these bottles and empty them all into the aquarium all at once. You'll find that the algae will take up all of those excess nutrients that you don't need or that you're not lacking in and you'll have a big algae problem. So instead, it's best to know what, what to look out for and dose accordingly. Now the biggest building blocks for planter tanks is called NPKs or macronutrients. You might have heard about this if you keep a vegetable garden or a healthy lawn and it's the same for aquatic plants. NPK is obviously an abbreviation between nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. And you can dose these individually or as part of a macronutrient bottle. So this macronutrient by River Revolution here contains nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium as well as some GH conditioning such as calcium and magnesium. So why would we need to dose all of these things? The first thing is let's talk about nitrogen deficiencies. Now we test for nitrates all the time when we're testing our water and that's the same thing as this nitrogen. But what happens is if you have a densely planted aquarium like some of mine, well I find that no matter how um, often or not often I change water, I can just never register nitrates in the aquarium. So that's where something like dosing nitrates, it might seem a bit counterintuitive, but it's actually really required because N is one of the three major building blocks for plants. So how do you know that you've got a nitrogen deficiency? Well, first of all, you can obviously test the water, but the other thing you might start to notice is leaves dropping off, leaves yellowing, and just not, very, not looking very healthy and robust. Things like yellowing leaves and lack of leaves is definitely a good indicator to start dosing nitrogen or maybe even testing for nitrates. Now the next one in NPK is the P and that is of course phosphorus here. Now phosphorus deficiency will present an extreme darkening of leaves and again a loss of leaves. So uh, either of those two things is definitely a good idea to dose phosphorus. 
However, a warning with dosing phosphorus is that uh, algae really finds it easy to take up phosphorus. So if you have a lot of this in your aquarium, it can be a big cause of algae. So if you've got a healthy planted aquarium, but you are st still noticing a lot of algae, it could be that your water source has quite a lot of this, in which case it might be a good idea to balance that out with nitrogen and potassium. The other thing about plants is that uh, algae can take up any of these individual things, but plants really need to take up a combination of all. The easiest way that I can think to explain it is uh, plants are more your meat and three veg guy where they need maybe the meat and the nitrogen, the veg in the phosphorus and maybe a glass of water in the potassium. Whereas your algae is more your slob on the couch who will just take whatever leftovers there is. So, so the best way to manage an algae problem is to ensure that you have an, a sufficient amount of all three of these macronutrients as well as micronutrients as well which we'll move on to. So then we'll move on to the K, which is potassium. And potassium deficiency looks like yellowing on the tips of leaves especially. Again, a lack of leaves. So really any sort of lack of leaves, it's a good idea to dose either one of these things or uh, a macronutrient supplement. But a potassium deficiency definitely is in the form of yellowing. So as we notice, nitrogen and potassium both present in yellowing and lack of leaves. So I would recommend if you are experiencing any of those things, maybe test for nitrates. If you do have nitrates present, then dose a bit of potassium. Or if you don't have nitrates present, dose a bit of nitrogen. And then if you're still having yellowing once you've got a steady a supply of nitrogen, then you might also have to dose some potassium as well. Now the next one that is included in the River Revolution macronutrients combo is GH. And we have, this is the GH conditioner here. Now GH is really important. We hear about it a lot in shrimp aquariums, but it's important in planted aquariums too. So in this instance, GH is a combination of calcium and magnesium, and a shortage of GH in a planted aquarium can present itself in things like stunted leaves or misshapen leaves, dark veins or lightning. So there's a huge range of warning signs when it comes to a GH deficiency. This is another great thing that can be tested for. So you don't have to just willy nilly sort of go through the guesswork. Um, you can definitely test for GH and ensure that it is at an optimal level. And an optimal level for GH is one to three DGH, which can be a bit confusing, but your test kit should definitely measure um, in that scale. So one to three DGH is really great for a GH. So, that's pretty much the macronutrients covered. Hopefully that was clear enough, but um, a lot of people do find it simpler and cheaper to just pick up the one macronutrient bottle. But uh, as we discussed, maybe you've got a, a large supply of phosphorus in the aquarium, in which case a macronutrient um, all in one would create a bit of an algae issue for you. So if you have tried to use uh, well-regarded macronutrient supplements before and it uh, always winds up in algae, perhaps that's the reason. Okay, from that point, I think it makes sense to move on to micronutrients, which again, you can purchase a micronutrient supplement, such as this one, or you can dose individual micronutrients. The one that I've got to show you here today is iron. So all in all, this micronutrient supplement here contains iron, copper, strontium, bromine, zinc, manganese, uh, cobalt, nickel, and a couple of others. So there's quite a few things packed into this bottle here. And micronutrients are generally the things that are depleted very quickly. Now in particular, the micronutrient iron is especially important for red plants. I think we've probably heard that before, but uh, if you want some nice vibrant reds, then definitely supplementing iron is the way to go. Some other iron deficiency indications are new growth being stunted or shriveled, see-through or yellow and not looking very vibrant at all. If you've got dull colors in your plants, then perhaps you are experiencing an iron deficiency. Now, outside of the problems associated with that iron deficiency, if you are experiencing other warning signs, such as pinholes, brown leaves, again, dropping leaves, then that's where this micronutrient supplement can come in. And things like the boron and manganese can help assist with that. So I find that pinholes is a huge one that confuses a lot of people. So definitely really important to have a micronutrient supplement on hand. Now next up, we talked about GH conditioning. So I think let's talk about pH and KH conditioning in planted aquariums. So first of all, 
Uh, a KH conditioner, you can think about this as kind of the stability in your pH. If you have zero KH out of the tap like I do, then introducing things like CO2, which is gonna create carbonic acid, which is gonna make the water more acidic, is gonna drastically swing your pH down. And then overnight it's gonna come back up as that carbon dioxide is exhausted. So things like a KH conditioner can be really important since we're adding so many things into our water, which may or may not cause the pH to swing. This is really gonna be eaten away at before anything is gonna to get to your pH. So you think about it, a bit of a force field for your pH value. As well as that, KH conditioning is really gonna uh, help your fish from being stressed out and your plants from being stressed out. The entire reason that we acclimate new fish into our fish room is to sort of avoid those drastic swings. And there's no point in saving them from those drastic swings if day to day your aquarium pH is gonna swing all on its own anyway. So a KH conditioner can really help to de-stress everything in your aquarium. Now pH up, this is kind of leading from what I was saying before about introducing CO2. The use of pH up is to relax the fish once again. If you've got some fish that enjoy some more alkaline conditions like some rainbow fish, but you do also want a healthy, vibrant planted tank, then you can sort of try and balance out that pH without making it too acidic from the CO2 and so forth, and without making it too alkaline through too much of this pH up, and also uh, supplementing with the KH so that it's not drastically swinging from one side to the other. If you can get away with it, I do always recommend a stable pH, and if you're finding it difficult to control using a pH supplement, then it would be worthwhile if you can, avoiding doing so, rather than playing a bit of guesswork and having some stressed out fish as a result of that. Now moving through, we have the last two supplements in the line that I'm gonna show you today, and the first one is biocarbon. Now I mentioned straight off the bat that a healthy planter tank is a balance of CO2, light and nutrients, and of course, carbon is part of that. Now as one of those key pillars of planter tank success, biocarbon, for example, is gonna help your plants to grow faster, it's gonna help keep algae at bay, and it's also gonna help the plants take up all these nutrients that we're adding in. Bottled carbon, in my opinion, is not as good as carbon injection, though I do recognize that the upfront capital cost of an injected CO2 system is prohibitive for some people, and in that event, then I would recommend dosing something like this biocarbon to sort of create some sort of middle ground between nothing and injecting a CO2 uh, from a canister. Carbon deficiency as well presents through uh, symptoms of stunted growth, dropping leaves, browning and transparency as well. So if you are seeing any of those things, could be an indication to get some carbon into your aquarium. And last but certainly not least, just like in humans, we need some amino acid. And amino acid is really gonna help your plants to recover after some trauma, such as trimming. It's also gonna assist your plants to photosynthesize and take up nutrients again. So uh, you're gonna notice a lot more vibrancy and a lot more of those nutrients being absorbed into the plants a lot easier with a bioamino acid supplement. The good thing about this amino acid as well is that it is beneficial for shrimps and inverts as well. It will basically help anything to build that cell wall and be nice and healthy going forward, kind of like giving your entire aquarium a multivitamin. So there you go guys, that is the simplest way that I can explain how all of these supplements work. So hopefully the next time that you're at your local fish store, you're not confused by the sheer volume of different supplements that there are. Now you might also see that there's variants of maybe shrimp, shrimp GH rather than a planted GH. I wouldn't be too intimidated by that either. Generally, you'll find that it might be in an easier concentration so that you're not having giant swings, which uh, fish might be able to handle, but shrimp might not. If you've got any further questions, feel free to drop them down below. I know a lot of people really struggle with this stuff. And to make it simple, uh, a quick summary of this chart here will be on the screen. So hopefully that can be a nice visual example, but there's plenty of different charts available online as well. If you wanna print one out maybe as a resource, stick it up on the wall of your fish room, and then you'll know what uh, you need to dose. In any event, I don't really think 
everybody should carry all of these supplements all at once, but at least if you start to notice one of those symptoms, then you can go out and pick the right supplement for you and be able to target the issue in question rather than create a secondary algae issue off to the side. So there you go guys, if this video has helped you out, it always helps me out to smash like, hit subscribe and all that fun stuff. And other than that, I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.